You're trying to start your first game, but you can't spend hours making a AAA game asset. You have to use an art style that's actually going to be accommodating to your skills and the amount of time that you actually have to make your game. So by the end of the video, you're going to learn exactly how to make good looking, low poly assets inside of Blender. Let's hop in right now. All right, how I always get started when making models like this is by making a block out. And now what I mean by block out is basically you're going to decide what sort of shape you're going to be making and use simple primitives, which is basically just like cubes, spheres, all of that kind of stuff to make your model. The reason we do this is because it's a lot easier to mess around with proportions when using this method. And on this model in particular, I was gonna make this kind of like spider bot type thing. I basically just made some Pinterest and found like a bunch of different references and then chucked all the references into a software called PureF. I struggled a little bit because I didn't really have a clear concept in mind and I wanted to kind of go with whatever I wanted to make. I was kind of unclear half the time. But yeah, throughout your block out, you need to be working on the different shapes, figuring out what actually works throughout your model, what doesn't, moving stuff around, when doing this, especially if your model is symmetrical in some parts, use a mirror modifier. You can add an MZ in the center of your scene and use that to use your mirror so that you're able to mirror it correctly across and be able to use the local transform of all your objects. It's really useful when kind of getting different angles because the local will, no matter how you rotate it, you'll always have the Z like up on the object, which is really useful when modeling these pieces, especially like how I was doing. Now, this is low poly. We can add a lot of detail. And if you don't add a lot of detail, it might end up just looking boring, lazy, and bad. So what you need to do is focusing on adding a lot of detail in small areas. Add the detail where you want people to look. You can't just cover the entire thing in detail because obviously then we're not going to be going for the art style and it's also going to take way too much time to make. Focus on specific areas that will draw the R and will take your model and make it actually look cool. Now, throughout all of these videos, I use pretty simple modeling tools. I've gone over this before, but you need to focus on building up your repertoire of skills. And throughout these videos, I hope I'm giving you new tools that will expand your horizons and make you better at Blender. One tool in particular that I used here was the array tool and not how you think you would. If you've used it before, you know you can take an object basically like duplicate it long. But what I used in this case was to make a circular piece for the like gun. What you have to do, you can take a circle, or any object, and place it in the middle. And then you need to add an empty in the middle at the same place. Now, select your mesh, go to edit mode. It's important you go to edit mode because you need to move the object, not the origin point. Take that little circle in edit mode, shift it over. Now, what you could do is go to the modifier tab, add in an add in a array modifier, and then change it from the off to object offset okay now choose your little empty and what you can do is now just rotate that empty and you're able to kind of duplicate it around a circle if you're going to be doing anything circular with a bunch of objects this is the best way to do it now the easy way to also get the right and like amount of rotation on this empty in the middle is basically take however many pieces you need so in this case it was three but maybe it's going to be five then just in the rotation of the empty just go 360 divided by however many so 360 divided by 5, 360 divided by 3, or whatever, and it'll give you the perfect amount to rotate it. Uh, and then you sit on the array, just set how many pieces you want to be iterated across. Throughout my model, I basically just start refining pieces, especially when I'm doing the block out. I basically will take it, add more edges, add more like detail in, maybe kind of replace stuff with different objects, working on them using like insets, extrudes, all of that kind of stuff. You kind of just start working on it, refining it, giving it more detail, trying to figure out what stuff works and what doesn't. Similar to the block out, you also do that with the detail. You have to figure out what's actually going to improve your model. So once you've gone through this whole process, taking it, analyzing your references, all the different shapes you need, and then using all the different tools, refining your shape, like kind of testing out and seeing what works, then you can go and actually start adding some material. I like getting this done pretty like early on, because what you can also do is figure out if it's actually going to look nice within your game, your render, your project, whatever. Because just seeing it in the viewport, with all the different like, viewport shading, it's not going to kind of really show you everything to do with your character. So I would recommend that you go and take it and start adding some materials. I used some pretty simple ones, similar to my reference, basically just selecting bits, apply your material. You can basically just add new sauce by clicking plus, and then you just click new and you have a new material. One thing I like doing, especially when I'm going to have stuff that's a lot like pretty similar, is using a random material. Now, what you can do is in your material, you have to go to the shade editor. You can basically just go shift A, add in a object info, and then shift A, add in a color ramp. Now, this is what's going to control the color for all of these objects. So if you go and apply the same material to a bunch of objects, easy way to do this is to add the material to one of them, control L for the linked menu and link the material to all the other ones. Once you have it all there, connect the random output of the object info into the back of the color ramp and the color ramp, plug it into the color on the BSDF. Now, what you can do is this color ramp is going to be all the different colors that your objects can be. If you want, you can specify specific colors by changing the blend mode. You can change the interpolation from linear to constant. What this means is that you can click plus to add new kind of like nodes along this color ramp. And then you can set the color at the bottom 
and other it'll be set to linear or you can actually change it to other ones and it'll kind of blend between them or you can set a constant which will make it that exact color now the random will basically assign a random value between like zero and one so black and white to all of your objects that has that same material and then yeah you have a random material going across it and you can do this with basically anything you can do it with the roughness you can do it with metallic so if you need to have some parts more rough more parts more shiny because you can just go make a new color ramp you could do the same thing you could add a color and you could add roughness so you could go add a color ramp and then plug that into the roughness so that some parts are more shiny than others this is a really very cool way of adding all the different materials just bear in mind that to be able to get this into a game engine you're going to have to bake this into a texture if you're not sure what baking is basically if you do anything procedural in your materials, you're going to have to export those to a image to plug them into something like Unity, Godot, Unreal Engine. The reason is, is because procedural textures are generated by the software and not every software is going to work the same way. So images is a lot easier to work with than like their own proprietary generated types. So just keep that in mind when doing stuff. Then I just wanted to present it nicely. So I went and added some simple lighting by adding a skylight, adding some simple area lamps, just a nice camera angle. I went and added pretty high focal length. So basically it goes and compresses it because if you make it uh, a very low number, so like 24 is going to be wide. Like this camera right here is a, or a 16 mil, but it's 24 millimeter. In the render, you use something like 120 millimeters. So it's like rarely zoomed in. So basically gets rid of all the perspective warping. And then I went and rendered it out. It ended up looking pretty cool. Now, when you're working on your game models, you need to have some good topology so that it makes your modeling quicker, faster, cleaner models will give you a lot less hassle. So click over here to go watch a video on how to improve your topology for game art. See you.